Hello, welcome back. In this episode, we will create uh, the authentication set provider, which actually tells the Blazor application who is the logged in user. You can implement it uh, anyway, and or sorry, in multiple ways. But in our scenario, uh, we will get the user from the local storage by retrieving the local user info, uh, transfer that into a set of claims that represents a user. So then Blazor know that this user is authenticated or no. We will see how we can implement that. But before we do anything, there is something very important. In Blazor, there is something called linker uh, that's related to the intermediate language while compiling the code and something like this, which helps in optimizing the size of the final project. But I think in the preview edition now it has some problems, so sometimes it tries some issues I have faced while trying to implement an authentication state provider. So to override that here, we have to turn that linker to off by setting this property in the project, planner-app.client, hit double click on it, and inside the property group set blazer link on build to voice. Hope like in the uh, latest version, the release version, or even in the upcoming reviews, this issue will be resolved. Okay. Now, the second step is to go to dependencies, manage NuGet package, and install Microsoft dot ASP.NET Core dot components dot authorization. Install this library that contains the class authentication state provider. Accept. Okay. Now you can go to program and here add two main services. The first one called add options. The service is very important for other services that requires options. And the second one is services dot add authorization core service like this. Okay, in this way, we are ready to go and implement our own authentication state provider. I will create a new class. I will call it local authentication state provider. Okay. And it's going to inherit from authentication state provider. Okay, import the library, and we are ready. Here we have, in the base class, there is an abstract uh, function called get authentication state async. This function, we have to return uh, the user or authentication state that has a claims principle which represents a user from where we will get that user. So this function runs twice when the application is running and the second place when or like when the user navigates to the website, sorry, and the second time or when we invite it or call that function manually by injecting this service in some components and call the get authentication state async. So from where we will get that user? Actually, as I've told you before in the previous session, we will get that from the user we have stored in the local storage. So the first thing we need is a, the local storage instance, I local storage service, get it from blazor.local storage, then in the constructor, I will inject that, I local storage service. Okay, store service equals, sorry, like this. Okay, now the first check that we want to do is if there is an item in the local storage called user, so then there is a valid user. Otherwise, we should return nothing like 
there is no user. So first, let me mark that function as async. Like that okay. Here, let's say if await storage service dot contains key async. If it contains the key that called user, then create the user. Otherwise, return new authentication state, new claims principle. I remove this. But just a new instance, there is no claims, which means like this tells the blazer that there is no user, no authentication, because the user, as I have said before, is set of claims. And here, I've just created an instance, but there is no claims. Now, here, there is an object stored in the local storage. We have to retrieve it. I'll say user info equals new. Uh, sorry, equals await storage service dot get item async we have to define the type of the item which is called local user info and add the key which is user so now i have the access token name email identifier uh, name identifier the id first name and last name so Now I will create a list of claims. New like this, then new claim. Find the type email user info dot email address. New claim for first name. User info dot first name. Last name, name identifier, the ID, I'm going to set it using the predefined claim types, dot name identifier, let's value the ID, the last one is email, first name, last name, access token. it in the claim so it's going to be easy for me to retrieve that value okay as you have seen here this is the list of claims the only difference between using the predefined claim types and by writing your own is this one as you can see this is the value defined by um, like with a schema so the user property of blazer can manipulate there is some properties like name or whatever so it can be manipulated directly from those claims but anyway at the end we can retrieve any of those claims by the claims property that we will see later on so the second thing is going to create is the identity identity of claims identity this way it takes two parameters claims and the type of the authentication it is a string you can set it to whatever you want I will for now call it barrier token like this so and the last thing is the user which is an instance of claims principle we pass the identity for it this way then return new authentication state which is the user and pass the user to it. Okay, I will repeat what I've done from the beginning. First, I have injected the iLocal storage service because we will use it to extract the local user info object stored inside the local storage of the browser. I've injected here in the constructor, create a private read-only field. Then we have implemented the abstract method from the authentication state provider called get authentication state async. I've marked it as async then. What I've done here is I have checked first if there is any object stored inside the local storage called user. If there is, so I try to get the user. Otherwise, 
I've just returned an empty user, which means that uh, this user has no claims, so Placer then identify that this user is not authenticated. Now, when I found that there is a user, I have uh, get an instance of it called user info, then I have created a set of claims that represent that user. After that, I have created an object called claims identity, which basically just defines the claims and define the type of the authentication, which is just a string. But in, my, in our case, we can set it to whatever you want because our authentication is facing like just a local storage or a local object. Then we have created an instance of the user, which is a claims principle, and we pass that identity to it. At the end, we have returned that state with the extracted user. So that's it. Now we can close this one and move to the imports. Here I will import Microsoft.ASP.NET Core dot authorization, sorry, dot components dot authorization like this because I will use some properties and components existing in this cross components. Then you go to the app.razor file. Here we have to change something. Also again, Microsoft, sorry, dot ASP.NET Core dot components dot authorization this way. You have to change the route view with authorize route view like this. I will open this tag because in the next video we have to add some stuff here and I will wrap the layout view with scaling authentication state like this. Those provides to me with all the authentication uh, mechanism or the authentication property that you need across your components. So save this. We will see in other videos how we can manipulate that to just before we leave to mention something. Uh, if the user is not authenticated, what's going to happen? And if the placer is authenticating the user while authenticating, what's going to happen as well? So multiple things we will see this. Now, I will go to the index to tracer to test if the authentication is working good. So I will add a component called authorize view. This one here, all the, the content of this one going to be rendered only if there is an authenticated user. So I can type something like this, h1, welcome, then we'll check this field called context provided by the authorized view dot user, which is the user we have extracted from the local authentication state provider dot here you can see multiple functions and properties that helps you to get many information about this so find first is a function uh, sorry this one helps you to get claims uh, by key so the key is first name dot value to get the first name of the user only if he is authenticated and show it with an h1 welcome and the first name of the user okay also if you want to show a content different for unauthenticated user and authenticated you can use authorized and unauthorized not authorized like this so in this way if the user is authorized he will see this one and if if he is not authorized he will see sorry you have to log in okay that's it let's run the app to see if everything is working fine Ah, that's nice. 
Welcome, Ahmed. But because I am authenticated, if I go to the developer tools, this is the user info object we have stored here when we have called the login function. Now I will remove this. Then I will try to log in again or to open the page. Sorry, you have to log in. Wow, that's nice. Cool. I will remove this for now because this is just for testing. Now, okay, so till now we have seen how Blazor knows the, if the user is authenticated or no, how we can implement our own authentication state provider, and how to show some content for authorized user and not for uh, unauthorized. Also, in the next video, we will we can move forward with other steps like fix the login instead of showing messages redirect to the user to the home page instead and protect some components using the authorized attribute so if the user is not authenticated and is trying to access those components what is going to happen we will see how to use that and create a redirect to login component so whenever he tries to access any component we will redirect him directly to the login if he's not logged in Thank you so much for watching hope you understand that good i know this stuff somehow for advanced but um, if there is anything that's not clear you can put your question on the comment section below or via the facebook official page ak software don't forget to like and subscribe the video if you are interested and thank you so much